Hi, I'm Laura, and I wanted to share with you a little bit why my family decided to get solar panels, and also to let you know that if you fill out your information directly below, you'll be able to download a copy of our actual power bills um, showing what the usage and cost was before we got our solar panels, as well as um, the after results for those same months year over year. And also we have our friend um, who purchased the same panels and used the same company. It's gonna have their actual power bill bills as well. So you can kind of get a real feel for how it's helped us and how much we've saved on our power bills. So I wanna explain why we decided to do this. I really like having lights on in our house. I like having a comfortable inside temperature of the home around 70 degrees in the summer as well. So this was causing a lot of frustration and tension in our home because our power bills were absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it was also causing me to have a little bit of guilt because of the environmental aspect of how, how much I was utilizing of that energy and how that might be um, impacting the environment. So my husband and I wanted to figure out how to fix these issues and so we looked for a solution and the first option we came up with was that we could have a dark and a hot house and that didn't seem like a viable option as far as I was concerned and the second option would be for us to consider getting solar panels. So we did a lot of research to determine um, if this would be the right option for us as far as to get the solar panels to purchase those and we researched about solar panels themselves. We researched manufacturers, the materials, installers, the costs, warranties, guarantees, etc. And we also researched federal and state, federal and state tax credits and also how um, having solar panels would affect our family's home uh, property value. So after doing all that research, the epiphany that we came to was that we learned not all solar panels are created equal. There's a huge difference in the quality, craftsmanship, warranties, um, and also the price when you're buying solar panels. We also learned it's very important to find a reputable company to work with when purchasing those panels and having them installed. Some companies were actually charging quite a bit more for a much lesser and lower quality panel. Um, so we did a lot of research to find exactly what we wanted to buy and who we wanted to buy it from. Um, the big day came and the panels were installed on our roof. We are so happy every time we see them where we are, know it was an amazing purchase and a great investment for our family. It's also helping to increase the value of our property value of our home. It's lowering the stress level inside of our home. And we also get to feel comfortable and feel good about the, um, how we're contributing towards reducing our carbon footprint and um, lessening our impact on the environment. So again, um, just fill out your information below the video here in those fields and you'll be able to download a copy of our utility bills as well as our friends. And we hope that this information is helpful for you when you're trying to decide whether investing in solar panels is the right decision for you and your family as well. No, I need to lean back a little bit more. Yeah, there, that's good. Okay, hit record. Ready? It's recording. Hi, we're making brownies today. Do you want me to just stop it? You're fine. I am getting the stuff I need to make brownies. That would be a bowl. I need a bowl. I'm not going to use the green bowl. I'm going to use the red bowl. See, I also need brownies that are here. Fudge brownie mix. Betty Crocker's favorites. Mmm. Mmm. -mm, good.
Hi. Cutting it open. Finding scissors. Here they are. Putting in the brownie mix. Going on a bounty hunt. <clears throat> Got my brownies. Now I need three tablespoons of water. Let me find a tablespoon. Quarter of a cup, it's too big. A tablespoon. That's a half a tablespoon. You can use eight of them. Now. Nope, it says three tablespoons, so we'll use six of them. So I'm putting in the water. One, two, <clears throat> Three, four, five, six. That's a tablespoon, right? You so, can have a tablespoon now? Yeah. So six of those equals three tablespoons. So let's put this away. Oh, we probably also want to set the oven. Let me find the pan we're going to use first. You know, I have this square pan. Is it in that? Are the dishes clean? No, it's running. Seven by eleven. Thirteen by nine. Nine by nine or eight by eight. The seven by eleven is the same as a nine by nine. Seven by eleven. Not exactly, but it's close enough. <coughs> so Oh, need to turn the oven to 350, 350, bake, 350, start. Then I need some oil and a cup. Oh. <clears throat> I found some sour balls. You know what sour balls I really like? I really like the yellow ones. Oh, whoa. Now I need a half a cup of vegetable oil. Huh?
half a cup. <coughs> Pour it on. Put the vegetable oil back. I need those wave bones. Uh oh. Do we not have any eggs? Yeah, we do. They're behind the milk. Putting down the eggs. They need to be washed and so fresh. These are fresh eggs from Lynn's house. Thank you, Lenny. Oh, I can just put them in the pot. Sure. I don't like you make that yolk a little bit more. You need to put some oil on the pan, right? The oven's at 215 degrees. That's probably enough oil. I used the wrong spatula last time I made them. No, it bend them. Mixing up the eggs. <clears throat> All done.
last sour ball, see? I'm doing a lick press. we don't want to have greasy. I think we're only going to bake it 25 minutes this time. That means the oven's done. Okay, see, here's all the brownie mix going in the brownie. Oh my goodness. I used to love brownies when I was a kid. I would go over to my cousin's house. I'm gonna try and bribe one of the one of my cousins to make me brownies. And she was really nice, she would do it most of the time. I would ride my bike over there, they live like a mile or two away. Did you know that? We should never eat raw brownie mix. Oh crap, I almost dropped it. You want it? might kill us. I've been almost dead though, it's not a big deal. <laughs> See, look at that scar on my head. make sure I got this right. <clears throat> it says 13 by 9 gram, <clears throat> 20 to 25 minutes. So we are using a 7 by 11 pan, so it's halfway between, so we will say 25 minutes. Here we go. Okay. 
so let's make sure we get everything washed off. And I think <clears throat> we are also going to learn how to make, how to do calligraphy, and also how to put together a friendship bracelet. And that'll be coming up soon. <clears throat> Just make sure we get everything all wiped off, get the scissors put away. And then we will fast forward 24 minutes and we'll be back when the brownies are done. Hi, we're back. If you can't hear the timers going off, so we'll see if our little brownies are done. Our little brownies. Oh no, I don't think it's done. Well. So we'll give it five more minutes. I'll be back. We'll give it four minutes. Okay. Be back. Okay, timer went off. We're going to see if they're done. Stick the little fork in. Yep, it's done. Okay, pull it on now. That's a cancel on the oven so it quits alerting us. And we'll be back in a minute when we're having fresh brownies. Hello, my name is Todd Larson, and I'm here today to tell you about the One Funnel Away Challenge. Sometimes it's called OFA. I don't know about you, but I have always had the interest of starting an online marketing company, making things work online that I had only heard stories about. And I've actually never found a good program that was reasonably priced that I could go ahead and invest in to make the whole online marketing thing work. And a couple of months ago, I was browsing around on the internet. I was YouTubing a couple of things and was, I had begun to look into this certain specific company. And one of the things that I found that this company was using was ClickFunnels. And I thought to myself, what is ClickFunnels? Why have I never heard of it? And then I, I began to look a little bit more. I found out that they do a one funnel away challenge. And I thought to myself, a well, one funnel away challenge, what is that? And I began to look into it and read over it. And I saw one thing that really caught my attention. It was only a hundred dollars for the one funnel away challenge. And <clears throat> I read over what was included in the one funnel away challenge and it includes 30 days of video missions from Russell Brunson. It also includes 30 days of coaching from Steven Larson and Julie, and it comes with a One Funnel Away customized kit. And I read a little bit down further below and it had some bonuses listed. And some of the bonuses that were listed were a hardcover copy of the book, 30 Days. It also had access, unlimited access, to the 30 Days interview interviews in addition to that book. And one additional thing that I, I read, I didn't really comprehend this until I got the One Funnel Away package in the mail. It included an MP3 player that had all of the episodes from a previous One Funnel Away. And as I was reading over everything, I thought to myself, there's no way. I was thinking, okay, how much time is it going to take? It's going to take four weeks, a couple of hours a day, and... Does it come with coaching? Yes. Does it come with books? Yes. And it's only $100. And I actually signed up on the spot. And after I had signed up, I 
I was looking a little bit more into what it was that was in um, the One Funnel Away Challenge, and I saw that the referring affiliate for One Funnel Away actually gets the $100. And I thought to myself, how could ClickFunnels be making it all work when they're putting all of this time in and they are actually paying the affiliates that $100? So here I sit, <clears throat> four weeks later, I've learned a lot more than I bargained for, that's for sure. I personally have become buddies with Stephen and Julie, <laughs> even though they'd never recognize me if they saw me in the airport or saw me anywhere in the city. On top of that, I, I feel completely comfortable with online marketing now. I can make online marketing work. And I want you to sign up for One Funnel Away. I want you to spend the $100, put the time in, find out how it works. And to entice you to do that through my affiliate program, the links that I have scattered around above and below on this page, I'm including some additional stuff. On a weekly basis, I will go ahead and send out registration links to register for a site which will have free access for those that use my affiliate link for the One Funnel Away Challenge to access things including the Marketing Secrets videos, the Dot Com Secrets videos, all of the Funnel Friday episodes, that's something else you'll learn about if you haven't, you can go to YouTube and search for it. Access also on this page to the top YouTube ClickFunnel videos. And I will include as well this affiliate page that you're looking at right now. Also a free discovery call if it's desired. That's one thing my wife and I talked about. And she said, I don't really feel the need to talk to anybody, but you know, feel free to, to invite people to put their phone number in, Todd, and you can call them if, if they wish. So I just wanted to restate what you'll be getting. First off, you'll be getting all the Russell Brunson products. You'll be getting all of those products that I just mentioned. And you'll be getting a true OFA or One Funnel Away Challenge experience, marketing experience for the measly price of $100. You'll have books, you'll have an MP3 player with all of the stuff on it. So I'd like you to click to join the challenge now. You'll be taken to a screen where you can enter in the information that I need, such as your name, your email address. And then from that place, you'll be directed to the One Funnel Away Challenge page that ClickFunnels is set up where you can go ahead and register for the seminar or for the class. Once again, I look, I look forward to hearing from you, to working with you, and thanks again. And I hope you guys have a great day. of the other two lemons that I've already done. I'm gonna do this to just get any additional precious lemon peel. Again, I've got a clean counter, so I will gather up my lemon peel that came off. This is continuing to stir, so I'm going to dump this in. This might be a good point to show you guys how it's looking. I have my 
Tupperware that I'm holding those in because they get kind of messy. I'm gonna, because the beater gets a lot of lemon zest on it. So I'm just gonna, I do this just to kind of get a lot of the excess off. Set it aside. And I'm gonna, I use this one that doesn't have any yogurt on it. It's the one that I was using to get the zest in there. I make sure I scoop every last bit because there's no more, there's no more lemons to be zesting. So I won't be using this for the most part. I think I will use it though today when I ream the lemons. I'll bring this over so you can get a closer look. You can see that nice color. And then that's some of the fresh lemon zest that's on that. Okay, so I'm gonna stick the beater back on there. Again, so you can hear me better. I think I will use this one for reaming my lemon. I just want to make sure that I really get all of that oil and peel out of this since I'm not going to be using it again. So it's really cleaned out. I'm done with this. The grater. I'm just going to set these over here, set them aside for now. And I'm going to cut the lemon in half. And what I like to do, um, this lemon looks really good. I don't know if you've ever seen a lemon on the inside, some have a lot of seeds and some don't have nearly as many seeds. These ones, you can kind of see that there's some seeds in there, but that one looks really clean. I really love when they don't have a ton of seeds. It makes my job a lot easier because I need to get all the seeds out. So let's see, I'm just gonna remove. So what I do with my knife, I just use a paring knife. I'm gonna go through and just kind of loosen up that meat. Because I'm gonna be using the reamer in just a little bit. And this kind of helps it come out. It would come out easily with the reamer, but I want to try to keep as much of the meat intact as possible because I really like the texture of uh, that I really like having those kind of chunks of real lemon in my yogurt when I bite into it so it's pretty cleaned out I go in between each okay so now I'll show you how we use a reamer they have all different kinds of rumors. This one is OXO brand. It's bamboo, I believe, or teak, and you don't want to stick it in the dishwasher, and you really don't even want to use dish soap on it. I rinse it really, really good with warm water, and you stick it right there in the lemon, and kind of just twist it around, just to get any of the additional meat out, and then I'll squeeze this. There's some reamers that are on a dish and you just push the lemon down on it. 
I do like those. They are pretty handy. But I have recently ordered this on Amazon and I, um, I've been happy with it. So I'm going through again and scooping out the meat. I'm okay if I get some seeds in this container. If I can help it and it's not too much work, I'll stick, if I get a seed out with my knife, I'll just kind of scoop it out of the way now. But when I'm done doing this and reaming, I go through with this and I pull all the seeds out. That get into the But again, this meat, like the lemon peel, I would consider extremely precious. I think I paid 60 cents a lemon. These are small lemons. So, I mean, it's not a bad price, but it's not great. It depends on where you live. It can obviously vary substantially. I used to live in Alaska and getting produce really expensive so I would have done anything to get a lemon for 60 cents up there but I live in Idaho and I think we're probably pretty average on price so I've kind of squeezed out I'm going to just gently ream it and just get any I don't like to get the membrane which is that stuff in the middle there that kind of connective stuff it sounds gross it's called membrane that is kind of gross so that's, and I'll show you what this looks like. It's maybe easier to show it to you from the bottom. It's a decent amount of juice and meat. So what I do between each lemon, I scoop out the seeds. Because once it starts getting too deep, it's harder to see the seeds in there. So scoop them out, make sure that it looks really clean, that I don't have any of the membrane, I just have juice and meat, and then I'll just dump it in. That way, when I do the next one, I don't have, like I said, a lot of juice because it does make it hard to see if you've got a dish full of the juice. It makes it hard to see the seeds as they're floating around in there. So now we'll cut the next one. I'll loosen up the meat. And I just stick this sharp, pointy paring knife in between each of the membrane edges there to kind of try to scoop as much out, like I said, before I use the reamer because that reamer does kind of just destroy the meat and I prefer to have it in as big of chunks as possible. I love to bite into that fresh lemon meat in my yogurt. It's a fun little surprise. So I'm scooping this out. I'm gonna, whoop, watch out, it'll shoot you in the face. Okay, I've kind of gotten this cleaned up. I'm gonna squeeze it. And then I'm going to use the reamer and kind of just gently make sure I've got any of the remaining meat out. This one didn't have a single seed, which is really fantastic. And again, I'm going to squeeze as much of the juice out. Okay, now I'm going to dump this one in. I still have the other half, but sometimes I'll do it in between halves or just in between each lemon. But since there was no seed, I wanted to get that in there before I get more seeds in this dish. This is a really nice lemon, very few seeds. In fact, 
I have yet to find one yet. Still no seeds and I'm almost all the way through this lemon too. Like I said, gently get the reamer and get out any of the meat that I missed with my knife while still trying to keep that membrane in the lemon. You can see it's, it's just that, you know, the stuff in between. I'm going to try to flip this so you can see how clean I get these. If I really wanted to get crazy, I've not done this before, but it is kind of nice to see there is some meat that I missed. I'm going to try that with this one too and see if... just finishing, there was not one single seed in either of the halves. There's a seed right here that I'm fighting with trying to get that out. Okay, I think I'll call this good. Looks like I got most of the meat out. Okay, since there's no seeds, I'm gonna dump it in. So it makes my job easier on the next lemon if there's any seeds. Okay. It's definitely starting to thin out. Because of the additional juice that is in there. I'm going to wash my hands really quick because as many of you know who work with lemons or other acids, if your hands are dry or have any cuts or cracks, the lemon really hurts. sure I still got one more lemon to ream. I'm just gonna make sure I've got everything off the edges. It looks so good. Just kind of tearing off the beater because the zest, the lemon peel, really gets clumped up in that beater, you can see. So let's see here. Okay. I kind of wanted to get as much of that peel off of the beater so I can stir it up and just test it again to see where we're at with flavor. And if you've got a bunch of peel on your beater, you're not gonna get an accurate sample. Get one of my clean spoons. It's 
It's really good. Very tart and lemony, which is what I'm looking for. Okay. I'm going to finish the last cutting and reaming the last one. Lock that back down. I can't believe what a good batch of lemons these are. Another one that looks absolutely fabulous. I've literally had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seeds in the two lemons so far, and this one looks like it'll be about the same. Again, I'm getting that meat out, loosening it out. The reason I don't just go through and cut all the way around the edges is because then when you go to ream it, really the member, I've, I've done that before because it certainly seems a lot easier, but you get a lot of that membrane, that stuff that is on the edges of each of those little, I don't know what the technical term are, each of these little pockets. And I don't like the membrane in there. It's chewy. And I usually, when I do come across it, if it's somehow snuck in, I usually have to get it out of my mouth because it's not really that fun to chew up and swallow because it's kind of, it's like pulp in orange juice, but in orange juice, when you get pulp, it's pretty well ground. So it's kind of in small pieces. The pulp is the membrane. And uh, this is not blended up or ground very, it's kind of big chunks if you get the membrane in there. And I don't like that. So I really take care. I'm gonna bring this lemon over to the camera, get a close up on it. So you can see just how good I'm getting that cleaned out. Just with a knife before I even and there's that much meat and, and some juice in there. So now I'm going to just kind of squeeze and then I'm going to, not a single seed, these are some of the best lemons I've seen in a while. I'm just gonna gently twist it like that to get any of the additional meat out. And then I've got one last what I do is I'll go like this just to get any additional meat out of there you just want to make sure you don't have any membrane in there on the reamer because it, it's sometimes you'll grab that when you're doing that little twist and and I'll go to slide that off that off there and I throw a bunch of the membrane in my beautiful batch of meat So far, so good. No seeds. Truly a miracle. I think we even got these lemons at Walmart. And sometimes their produce is just okay, and sometimes it's better than others. This looks like a good batch of lemons. And I just got these yesterday, so they are you know, new coming home from the store. Of course, that doesn't mean they're freshly picked. I don't know how long they were sitting in the store. And I'm just gonna gently 
sure I really scoop the last of the meat and the juice out and the reason why I lifted this up is because it's hard to really get this stuff in there it's hard to get that in there when it's I'm going to run it again while I wash my hands. And then I'm going to get the container of the Greek yogurt out of the freezer. show you my helpers, see if I can. I'll flip the camera. Okay, I'm gonna do one final mix. Now that that cool with salt in there. Get it all mixed around. this in there with the rubber scraper. I'm done with the cool it. Again, I double dipped, but it is only for me. I'm trying to decide what I'm, what it might need. I think I'm gonna do a little more trivia. about a tablespoon. It just needs a little something more.
I think that tastes good. I'm gonna mix it for another minute and then we're done. when you turn the mixer on, it really does get that zest that I put in there, the lemon peel, really gets kind of gathers up, gets kind of caught on this beater. And then I'm going to dump it into a container. I will show you what I do with it when I'm all done. It's very nice and thick. I take this large container, which had some yogurt in it that was left over from earlier today. I just finished it. I'm going to wipe off my counter. It's a little sticky over there. So I'm going to wipe this off before I put that container down. This is pretty heavy, so I'm gonna use two hands, and here's the magic. You can see how nice and thick it is. I really like this consistency. So it was the three blocks of the cream cheese. Two of those were fat free. One was that new Chatel. It was about a half of a container of Truvia. Two packets of the Country Time No Sugar Lemonade. Two packets of True Lemon. Uh, probably about a teaspoon of that uh, lemon oil and three lemons, the zest of the three lemons and the meat from the inside of the lemons and um, I'd say about a half cup of the lemon juice from the real lemon that brand the real lemon probably about a quarter of a cup maybe less, an eighth of a cup maybe uh, the key lime juice and I think that's that's everything I can attach a recipe to the video if you'd like so then what I do is I take these jars I really like this size I get these at Walmart they're the care the curve mason jars and I'll typically use about just a measuring cup. This is a half cup. And I'll take a big scoop and I'll do another big scoop. And I 
I do this because I like that portion size and it kind of almost just goes up to those the rings on there and then of it. I'll put it on the top and just smear it all around. And what I do is I'll do several of these. I'll put the lids on them and I'll put them in my refrigerator so that whenever I'm in the mood, I can grab one out and they're pre-portioned, ready to go. I already have all of the calorie and nutrition information input into my fitness pal, the app that I use to track everything. And I will give this a sample with my clean spoon. Let me show you what it looks like before. You can see it's beautiful and delicious and creamy. You could do it without the Cool Whip if you didn't want it. And let's see. It's delicious. A wonderful batch of Lara's Greek Lemon Yogurt. Thank you for watching this video.